Today I'm going to be trying out my new power regulator with the ESP8266 and I'm going to try getting some code running on this so I'm going to flash it with some new firmware uh, using the scripting language Lua. So I'll start off with a blinking LED example and then move on to more interesting stuff. Right, let's get stuck in. So here is the existing board that I've been using to try and run the ESP8266. So this is my cap for the old supply. So we're going to remove that and I'm going to get the new ones from the robot cupboard. So these are 1117 3.3 volt supplies. Nothing like nice fresh components. Pop one of these out. Based upon the data sheet, this will be ground, this will be voltage out, and this will be voltage in. I'll mostly follow the app note here from the data sheet, but I'm going to leave out the capacitor C in just for now. Here's the circuit in Fritzing, made based on the LD1117 app note and with the least change from the previous one. The first thing I'm going to want to do is bring that ground connection down here, one pin. Two pin header I was using here isn't quite going to work for this. Maybe I can snap it into two one pin headers. Two one pin male to male, so then I can use the female connectors there. And so this will be voltage in here, and this will be ground here. We're going to want this capacitor here, so that's got to be going to ground. So there's ground, there's power. So we'll put that across here, leave a space for the device itself, that might help. We may as well put ground out here so we've got a few more pins to work with down on this uh, breadboard. It's getting a little bit cosy there, but it did work for the other device. Okay, there we are, so that's going to be voltage out. We take the regulator, drop it in there I suppose, so there's the in, the out and ground. Okay, so now we've got that one breadboarded up and now this brown wire here was actually ground and this red one here would be voltage. So let's see what happens. I'm not connecting anything else to the computer yet so this is just the uh, USB supply. I'll, I'll take this out just in case. Let's see if we get the LED to light. We do. Okay, excellent. I'll disconnect this before going ahead. Put in this pull-up resistor here. Put in the positive rail connector. We should see a nice strong light on there. I think you saw that with the blue flashing lights. I'm happy with supply. So we're going to try and put some firmware on it. This board actually looks quite a lot as it did before. It's now powered. Uh, I'll just take away the ground so it'll turn off. And I need to go and connect one of these GPIO pins, the GPIO zero pin, down to ground in order to flash firmware on it. Uh, let's just get a pin diagram. This is the ground. This is the VCC. This pin is going to be the GPIO zero pin. So let's put that in there. So I'll reconnect ground. We're currently at 115200 board. Let's see what happens. LB L R L. Okay, this could be the wrong board rate or not human readable. Let's try changing to 9600 to see what we get. And apply this, then disconnect and reconnect ground and ah. So my guess is this is intended for code. Okay, well let's go get some flasher code. I'm gonna use this Node MCU flasher. In its usage, it looks fairly easy. Does it need any dependencies? Doesn't at all, excellent. So what have we got here? We've got a release directory, so Windows 32 and Windows 64, while well, I'm 64-bit Windows. And that file, so if I download that, <laughs> now, we actually say need to view raw. So we just wait for that. And there we are. I've got my ESP8266 with CHPD pulled up and GPIO0 pulled down to ground. That's a bit of an awful colour scheme. You can't really see that blue on that black. The ESP is connected on COM10. The flasher is already primed with the Node MCU firmware, so I just need to click flash. Let's see what happens. 
It's found the MAC address for the device. That's a good sign. It's beginning to flash. I wonder what that QR code does. Ah, it's just the same text shown there for the access point MAC address. Now it's nearly done, I've got to admit I'm a bit excited to see what I'll get and be able to do with it. A tiny programmable Wi-Fi device will be great fun. A green tick, looks like I'm good to go. To put it back into user mode, I need to take out ground and also disconnect this GPIO pin here. And now it's out of flashing mode. Let's turn it back on and see what we get. There's a prompt and cannot open init lua. Init lua is some kind of startup file. For now, we're not going to use it, but I might find a way to exploit that so it'll do something when we start up. So I can put my files onto the ESP8266 and do other handy things. Uh, I'm going to use this ESP8266 CLI, uh, a command line interface. Uh, this is actually based in Node.js. So to actually install it, I'm probably going to use this NVM method. To get that onto a Windows box, I'm going to need something known as Bitnami. There are other Node installations for Windows, but this makes it almost a single click. Installers. We have a Windows installer here. We can download this. Once Node is installed, adding the uh, module into Node is as simple as this. And you wait a while. I should now be able to use that to talk with the device. I'll go back and do a simple print hello, and then we'll see if we can upload files to it. So let's do hello world in Lua. I'll assume that I'm going to need to do control J and then enter to send it like we did before. Awesome. This might be easier if I change the serial settings. So line editing and local echo are forced off. This way I can let the ESP firmware handle the keyboard over serial properly. So let's try that again. Hello world. Normal enter. Perfect. Now presumably I can also do some simple maths. Great. So this is now running on the 8266. Next thing is to start doing Arduino-like commands with it. Let me see if I can get an LED on a GPIO pin. So let's see if we can do a hello world of controllers. We're going to try and connect a nice green LED as distinct from the other, the red one there. We'll see if we can take a resistor up from ground somewhere. I'm not going to go into calculating resistor values today. These two lines here correspond to GPIO 1 and 0. Um, we'll take the flat end cathode and connect that from GPIO 1 down to this. Now that's currently in input mode. There's a bad sign at this point. There we go, that's better. The camera can now see the green LED that's actually being powered by one of the outputs or driven by one of the outputs from the 8266. While I was connecting that LED the 8266 must have reset a couple of times. I really should have turned it off first. OK, let's see if I can talk to it. Nope. Tapping away, but nothing. Time to try a reset? Ah, that's something. OK, off camera I found that that 8266 command line tool seemed to put it back into the right state for me. So now I can try a hello world again and check all is well again. Hurrah! Let's try that again with just enter to make sure it's not some weird line ending problem. That's fine. OK. I've disconnected the LED. Let's set the GPIO mode and put it back. Let's type GPIO dot mode. Uh, what pin number do I need here? Do I need some kind of symbol or some other number? Well, according to the web, pin 3 is GPIO 0. Then I need GPIO.output in uppercase. And hopefully we've now set GPIO 0 to be an output. Then let's try again reconnecting this LED. Oh, and it reset. OK, so 
this is reset. I'm going to try and put the GPIO mode back in here. Let's try it. And it's gone dead again. Okay, let's disconnect it. Give it a count of three, two, one. Reconnect it. Now, here's something interesting I observed just now. If I send the command via this interface, oh, I have to close this first. When that's closed, if I run this command, this gives me back the right result. And if I reopen Putty, and I'll load my uh, session, I can now interact with it. So, whatever state it managed to get into when I connected that LED, it took this stuff here to get it out of that state. Currently, GPIO 0, which apparently is what uh, 3 links to, is in output. So let me try and put this LED back in and see what we get. We didn't get a reset. Okay. So if I do gpio.write 3 gpio.high, does that LED come on? And it does. Awesome. Let's set it to low. Do I get line editing? Low. Excellent. So now I'm able to turn an LED on and off with Lubricode on the 8266. That's long enough for one video. I think I'll get it blinking and web enabled next time. Cool.